Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm Dan Cable Guy. Thanks for joining me. So I'll try and keep this intro short, but I wanted to show you today a really simple way to use SketchUp Free to create a scale version of your home cinema or home theatre. So if you're looking to plan out where the seats go, where the speakers need to go, things like that, here's some really simple tools to make your own mock-up of your own room using the free version of SketchUp. It's not photorealistic, but it does really help for room planning. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe. Any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Hello and welcome to this short video guide of how to create a home cinema or home theatre using SketchUp Free. So not one of the paid versions, this is the free of charge version on Mac. I'm using it but I've used it, I have used it in the past on PC and it is very simple to use. Very good for creating room dimensions and placing physical objects in a design space. So it's not going to give you high resolution rendered photos that look realistic that's not why i use it personally i use it to manipulate objects into a real life space and work out how much room i've got to move around how much room i've got to fit in seating which angles i might need for speakers and things like that so on screen you'll see something that i've already built which is what i call uh, I normally call it my end game uh, it's sort of a mock-up of a dream room that I'd like to have. So you'll see at the very top there, apologies for anyone in other measurements, but I, I work in the UK, so I'm using millimetres. But you've got the size of the room here, 4.740 metres. Uh, it's in millimetres, but 4.7 metres by 9 metres. So it's a really good size space. As I say, this is sort of a future room that I would like to have. On the right, you'll see that I've created some what they call scenes. So I'll press play and it will guide you through some of these scenes. It's just a, a way of creating almost a walkthrough of the room, a very simple walkthrough, nothing too high end. So here we go. To create one of these, by the way, you just move the camera, which I'll show you during the video, and then you add a scene. And once you've added the scene, it just puts it into a playlist, basically. So you'll get the idea now, the camera's moving to a new position. The camera will then move into the room. Here we go. And obviously this is just a mock-up, as I say. The speakers in here are actually based on what I almost now have. These are the Arundel Sound 1723 models. And due to my current room size, I've ordered the 1723S which is the smaller version. So I own the smaller version of the speakers you see in here. But again, you get the idea. I've added in seating, doors, speakers, height channels, so that you can get an idea of how you need to angle them. I've added what looks like uh, acoustic panels, well, fabric panels on the walls. You can hide, you can mask certain parts of the room. Like I've just masked the screen there, for example, so that you can see the speakers behind it. You can now see on screen that I've masked the nearest wall so that you can see through the wall in your scenes. So all these sorts of things are, it's a free of charge program, so you really can't argue. Uh, you know, the textures, yeah, they're not overly lifelike and, and that's not what I use it for. Um, the Let's just pause it there, for example. So straight away, I hope that's a reasonable idea of what you can achieve with it, just with some basic shapes, a lot of these components, as they call them, like a chair is a component, a speaker is a component. All of those are components and a lot of them are available to download free of charge from the SketchUp software. Others are not available, so you might have to make them yourself, which is basically what I did with the speakers. But that's another story. So the green areas that you see on screen here are actually downloaded from online. So if I go over on the right hand side here to components, you can see that here. I'll just highlight that again with the cursor. The little boxes there are components. And those are basically components of what are built in to your model. So I've just gone up here. You've either got up there is the 3D warehouse, which is where you can download pre-built components. And then this is a list of all the components that are in my project, my current project. So if I have a look through here, there you go. 
so the Dolby 7.1 template so somebody else not me somebody has created this template with the green shapes so effectively what this is if you go onto the Dolby website Dolby.com I believe they have all of their recommended angles for where your speakers should sit so this angle over here for example is the angle they recommend for a Dolby 7.1 system or Dolby Atmos 7.1 point something system and that's the angles within the green triangle effectively that's the angles they recommend for the left front speaker left front over here the black line in the middle if you change the angle of the camera is actually a green line and that's where they recommend of course for the center that's direct onto the listening position listening position is indicated by this red circle which I put in the middle there and then of course right channel surround right uh, surround back right surround back left surround left and if you had wides then you can download the wides one which is actually up here on the top right Dolby 5.1 7.1 or 9.1 so if you download the 9.1 this would add in some additional angles here which would be where you would ideally for a Dolby Atmos system of that number you would add your wide speakers so let's have an actual look at how you build a room basically I'm going to start again and add in some of my components so we can see here the room is 4.7 meters wide just over by 9 meters I'm not going to build a room as detailed as this let's just do that so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over to here which is my scenes this is where I'm going to set my angles so I'm just going to put this on let's go from this one here which is showing us the front of the room and from an angle which is quite simple and then on the left hand side here this is how I start a project I would go into here which is basically where the rectangle tool is click on rectangle tool and then start from the center of your axis and what you can do is you just uh, it depends on how you've got your setup but I just tap once on the trackpad and now on the very bottom right hand side I won't highlight it because it will move my cursor but the very bottom right hand side you've got dimensions again it's in millimeters so you know you can change that within the program but if I now go for example I want a 4.7 meter room which is 4700 millimeters comma as in by and I'm gonna then have a room let's say six meters so 6,000 as in 6,000 millimeters and then just press enter or return so there is my room size basically uh, so nearly just under five meters by six meters not too bad not a square which is good because that's not what you really want for a home cinema so let's just quickly change the angle let's show you that here for a start so you've got some angle tools here on how you can look around most common one is going to probably be this one which is the orbit tool uh, and then what we're going to do so we want to change we want to add some thickness some depth to our rectangle so if I go here to push or pull and then I've got one here called offset so I'll just go into offset and you can do one of two things right so click on the edge you can either now do an offset on the outside of your shape which is obviously going to make the overall shape bigger or you can do an offset on the inside which would basically be like saying well my physical room is five meters by five meters but I'm gonna have to lose some space for acoustic panels and for brickwork and stud walls and things like that it really depends how you're gonna do this I'm gonna do it on the outside so I'm gonna say that my internals I want the internals of the room to be the dimensions I put in originally and I want then a bit of excess so I'm going to say, for example, let's go 120 millimeters, which I think is roughly the depth of a stud wall. Um, but it just gives us a bit of thickness anyway. So if we remember, this room is orientated that this is the front of the room. This is where the door was coming in, for example. Now that we've created this shape with an offset, we can actually start to make a 3D shape. So now that we've got this object with our offset, you can go back over to here which is where push and pull is found so if I highlight this one at the top here with the arrow pointing upwards that is push and pull so if I were to highlight the middle area here and tap and then raise my mouse upwards 
I raise the center of that shape. Now I don't want that, so I'm just going to do Control Z. But if I highlight the offset area, there we go. So you're now creating a three dimensional shape. So let's say that our ceiling is 2.5 meters tall. So that's 2,500 millimeters. There you go. You've now set yourself a, a room. A simple, very simple room, but you have set yourself a room. So we can now use our lookabout tools or whatever you like to call them. Or in fairness, you can just go up here, use the top right hand side, top down view, and you've actually got here either two dimensional or three dimensional. So that can be very helpful. But let's say now then, for example, we want to, we're putting in a riser. I know I'm jumping ahead of some things here, but we can go right from, oh, I just go back over here, sorry. Use your tape measure, just highlight tape measure, tap on the surface you want to start from and click. So 4.7 meters. So then we can go from the middle of there and let's go back three meters. So 3000 millimeters. And let's say that that's where we want our seating to be. So again, I can then use this to create some guides. So there's my guides then, that's three meters back. Um, I can put on a tag if I want to show that three meters, but we know that because we just measured it from here to here. So let's double check it. Uh, three. Okay, apologies, it started slightly out, but you get the idea. Let's go in now and just delete that guide. There we go, so we deleted that guide. So this is basically then three meters, which we made a six meter internal dimension room. So that's actually halfway down. So we can now go to components and we could then bring in some of those components. As I mentioned, you can get these from the warehouse or I've already obviously populated them into here. So let's show you then, let's just pop this one down. I don't have a central marking at the moment, uh, I could have done a central marking that would have been easier but let's say we want the listening position to be about three meters which I would say is about there and then over here on the left hand side see that's a moving tool but you've also got a rotate tool so you could highlight that for example let's highlight it on the corner drag that across and then just turn that round there we go so we've now turned that round to the right position let's move it back into the middle so listening position where your ears would be was about three meters so that's probably about there let's grab a tape measure tool and mark into our room so the room is four seven zero zero in width so that's going to mean we need to put in let's go across here 2350 which is half of the room size go back to the left and go to our moving tool there we go so we'll line that up there that's a good start now if you want to make positioning a bit easier go back to scenes over here and then put this into two dimensional and then we've got that shape highlighter ready let's just go to the highlighter tool which they call it let's have a look what do they call it select We've already selected this seat, uh, command copy or command C and whatever that would be, control C I'd imagine on PC. So we can now, if we want to, in fact, you can overlay that perfectly. There you go. And then you can actually just move that around. So I'm gonna create a line of three. You can see there with the red line highlighted, it means it's moving it just on the red axis. It's not moving it up um, as in on screen. It's not moving it up in terms of real life where it would lift it off the floor. So again, you could do that here and then just do the same again. So command, well, paste basically, control V, command V. There we go. What I like to do is if you can just highlight it over the previous shape, you could do this more fancy if you wanted to. But uh, obviously I'm just doing this a little bit quick. Go back to the Moval tool. Move that across on the red axis. And you've now got three shapes, uh, three seats. 
So again, if you want to now, you can go back to three dimensional, look at the models from different angles. Obviously that's going to have walls at the moment. Let's lift that up a little bit. There we go. So you're now starting to see a room. Now you could do a second layer if you wanted, all sorts of things. If you wanted to do that, by the way, again, I would probably just go two dimensional, do another rectangle tool. Uh, again, I'm not going to do a precise one, but you would have seen on my last drawing, I had a riser. So there we go. We've just created, I think that's actually going to be on the ceiling. So let's just go back to a 3D shape. Yeah, it's put in a ceiling for us because of the angle we were at. So let's do that a bit differently. Let's do it manually. Just grab the tool here. What might have been easier is to do this box before the seats, but it is what it is. It's no problem. So grab a rectangle. Bring that down to just behind the front row of seats. Let's just move the move the room slightly. There we go. This should be better now. Grab a rectangle. Start from there. Drag that down to just behind the front seats. Again, this is not exact. You could do this really precisely. Now what you can do is go back over to here to where we've got push and pull. Use the push and pull tool, highlight the raised area. And again, instead of just moving this up and down and then pressing enter, you can use measurements. So say for example that you wanted a 30 centimeter riser, that's almost a foot, then you would do 300 millimeters, press enter, and there you go, there's your riser. Um, you could have made this smaller, you could have had a rectangle that sort of ran along here, for example, just enough for the seats. You can do various, you could now go in and add a small rectangle down the bottom and add a step. Loads of things that you can do with that just to help maximize it. So that is, as I say, really, really useful. Uh, one of the main things for me, and if I turn the image around again, in fact, let's just use the scenes, is that Dolby that I mentioned, the Dolby specifications. Now you could put a screen here, put a projector screen on the wall, just download one. I have one in the other image. You can download furniture. Not everything's there, like I said. Not everything is, but most things are. So here we go. Here's the Dolby example. Let's just, I'm going to have to put this here while I make it smaller. Uh, that's a good idea. Actually, it means I can show you how to make it smaller. Let's just change the angle slightly. That'll make sense in a second why I just said that. So if you go to the left here and you use the scale tool, which is in the same place, let's just bring that up as move and rotate, then you can basically scale this up or down. So I would make it just a bit bigger than the room. Go to our move tool, which is here. Move that back to the room. Go back over here on the, on the right hand side to scenes and go to that over the top view bird's eye whatever you'd like to call it captain captain bird's eye here we go highlight our model well we don't have to highlight the model we've already got this highlighted so you can now bring this to the main listening position it looks like it's gone below the model we can have a look at that by going to an angle yes it has so again now we've gone to that we'll go back over to here we'll go to scale is part of this move section and we can now scale this upwards so there you go you can scale that a bit taller which means that when we now go to the overhead view you can now see why this becomes so useful you can see that in your room if you're trying to maximize that front row of seats three meters viewing distance from the screen you would have to have well you would be recommended by Dolby to have your speakers within these green triangles because those are the angles recommended by Dolby for a 7.1 system for example or 7.1.x so again that's useful but I think that's going to cover some of the main areas here as I say you've got things like the scenes which are on the right which allow you to just save a snapshot of the image and then you can play those back by pressing play and it will just almost guide you through your room in different ways. You've got the components area, which we've looked at on the right here. 
components give you access to two things components that are already in your project and components that are on the 3d warehouse which again is all free of charge if you go to the display option over here there's options like these you can for example uh, show or hide hidden objects you can delete all of the guides on screen which are the little dotted lines that I've added so when I've used the tape measure those are guides you can delete all of those and also if you've hidden things let's quickly show you that if I go up to the top left here just click on the cursor tool the select tool let's click on a chair and then I'm going to do control click on Mac or you could do right click on a PC and then you can come over to here and you get a lot of options for that component and one of them is to hide the component so this is how you would hide a wall for example so I can now go back into the goggles here that I showed you which is called display and I can now unhide all hidden objects let's just show you one version of that as well let's go to scenes let's go to our diagonal shot let's click on a wall and right click or control click if you're on Mac hide click on the next layer of wall again right click or control click and hide and there you go you can see you've now hidden that wall but you didn't have to delete it so you can do this on various components hide those components and then allow you to see into the room a lot clearer while you're doing your designing as I mentioned you could put a screen in here you could build out a false wall you could start doing lots and lots of things to try and map out your room without even having to go in the room if you don't have it yet or if you don't have some of the components as long as you know their dimensions accurately then you can start to sort of model them into your cinema room space and as I said that will really help you with speaker angles especially and that includes the Atmos speakers you can go in from a side view for example a bit like this you could then go into two-dimensional mode you could then go into here with the protractor tool and start working out the angle of degrees for your Atmos speakers so if you know that your front speakers should be within I can't remember the full specs but if you know they should be within a certain degree from here you can plan that by using the tools built into SketchUp again you're not going to get a photo accurate result at the end but I would hope it would just give you a, a really nice idea of how your room is going to be eventually you can add in real size people as well in here for perspective so if you if you're unsure of how the room's looking you can add just a generic character into the room of course that will then give you an idea of how the room would be uh, in real life so I really hope that's been useful I think I've covered most of the areas on on the right hand side to a degree again this isn't an advanced course but it's just showing you how you can build a simple model of your home theater or home cinema and you can incorporate some really useful things like key things to a system how to align your speakers in terms of the specifications that you're aiming for so I hope that's been useful. If it has, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe. Any questions, pop them in the comments. Although, as you can see, I'm not an expert on this. I've just purely learned over time. But I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.